Hi, George here. Adobe just released the 2023 version of Photoshop Elements. And as always, there are a few new things in here. So let's see what we've got. We'll start off with a new feature which allows you to do some animation in images. I personally don't like these kinds of things. I think they're kind of cheesy, but let me show you this one. And it's up here under the Enhance option and come down here to Moving Elements. We already have overlays and photos. We're now going into Elements. In this case, I'm going to make the sky a bit more animated. So I'll choose sky, let that find the sky for us. Did a pretty good job. It missed this mountain in the background back here. I'm not going to be worrying about that. And it missed this hill right here. Let's go ahead, we'll fix that one. We'll grab the brush tool right here and I'll subtract. And here's our brush size. You can adjust your brush size right there. And I'll just brush over the hill and just remove that little bit that it missed. There we go on a smaller size brush. And let's get just a bit right here and a bit right up in there. Okay. That should do it. The sky is now selected. I'm also going to get that out of there. Okay. Let's now take a look at this. You come down to this setting down here and it gives you an arrow. You take the arrow, come onto your picture and then move that to show the direction you want the animation to go and how far you want the animation to move. So I'll do it about like that kind of a little bit up and to the right. If you want to, you can add in additional arrows or additional options and then select all of those right there. But I think using just one is probably the best approach in most cases. And that's really all there is to this. Click the play button down here and you can see what the effect is. Once you like the effect, you can come down and click on the export button and export that out as an MP4 video file. There you go, there is the effect. And as you can see up here, all it's doing is moving the image and doing a bit of a blur in there. But it's pretty obvious that that's what's happening on this. So it really does not work that well with clouds. Notice also we're getting the mountain over here kind of duplicating. That's a bit odd in there. We get this building duplicating right across here. So it really doesn't work that well in most instances. Obviously they picked a waterfall picture where it works perfectly, but I'm sure they spent a long time to find just the right picture to show the effect. But I think in the normal use, it leaves a lot to be desired. So this is one I don't really think is up to scratch yet. Okay, I'll click on cancel. Not gonna save those changes. So there you go. That is right over here. That's the moving elements. I may find some pictures where this works out better, but I think in most cases, this is gonna be a little bit problematic. The next new option is what they call a peek through. And it's one of the guided edits. So I'll just click on guided up here. It's in the fun edits. And it's right here at the beginning. There's before and after, you can see that. And I'll grab this picture right here. And we'll choose that one. And here we go. Now there are a few things over here in the overlays. We have some leaves and some flowers. Here's some branches with some snow on it. We'll be using that one. And just a few more things. There's not that much in here yet. You really need a lot more available in here to make this really useful. It's a bit limited, but we'll try out this snow thing here. Click on that and it's going to be opening up some options in here. And on this one, we have there's four options, upper left, upper right, bottom left, bottom right. I'll do upper left. There we go. Looks okay. Let's do upper right. There you go. looks okay. Now, once you put these things in, you can come in and actually move them around, resize them like that. So you have some ability to modify this. You can even rotate if you want to. If you do a rotation, just watch out for your outside edges there. You may need to move that back out of the frame like that. That looks pretty good. I think these overlays have some chance in here to be interesting. There's a, there are four spots. The spot here, you can see as you roll over that blue rectangle, click into a spot, there's your selection, and then choose your next option. We'll drop it into that spot just like that. To remove one of these things, hit it, hit the delete key, and it takes it back out again. Now, as far as options go, right-hand side, just a little bit. You can adjust the hue and saturation values down here. You also can blur things out a bit if you want to right down here. And you can apply a vignette onto the whole picture. I think this is one that could be interesting, could be useful, again, depending upon your photograph. Okay, let's go back out of this. I'm just going to click on cancel on that one. Another new and potentially useful feature here inside of Guided Edits is this search button right over here, right hand side. Click on that. It gives you a search bar up here. Type in what you're looking for. I'm just gonna type in blur and we'll see what we get. We can get a few options. Make your subject stand out by blurring the background, add a motion blur to the background, add some action with motion blur. So it gives you some options in here to help you find the guided edit that will do what you want to do. So nice feature if you're not that familiar yet with the guided edits. Now there aren't that many edits in here. You know, once you've gone through these a few times, you know everything that's available. So after you've used it, it's not gonna really be a help. But when you're first starting out, when you're brand new to the program, this could be a useful little trick right here. Some of the options in existing edits have changed here. Just take a look at this dog picture and the pattern brush. Here we go. 
And you notice over here, the patterns have changed. A few of the ones that were here before have gone away and we've had several new ones added in. So you may have lost one of your favorites, but you may also get some new favorites in here. So the pattern selection has changed. So if you use this particular brush, the pattern brush, make sure it still has the patterns that you like to use. I kind of like these little swirly things. These are fun. There we go, a little bit of swirliness happening in there. Let's increase our size a bit. There we go. Still does a really great job on getting that in behind the subject, as you can see. We'll cancel that out. But all in all, the gutted edits pretty much have stayed the same, aside from just a couple of those little changes in there. Something that you can't see in the program here is that it has been improved in the back end, and it's supposed to run faster than it did before, load faster, run faster. It also is working with the new Apple M1 chips, so it should be working better with Apple chips. That's been a problem in the past. I don't use a Mac, so I've never experienced that. But I have had people complain about how it runs poorly on a Macintosh. Those things should have been fixed by now. We'll just have to see how that goes, see if we get any comments about it working on the new Mac chips. There are several things that have been improved. Let's check out the photo collage. And there's some new things in here with the photo collage. We have a horizontal images in here. Notice these blue triangles up the right-hand corner. That means that these have not been downloaded yet from the server. And those are all fairly new up here. And some new stuff right down over here as well. So a few new options in here on the photo collage. But if you need something fast and easy, this really is a great way to do that. Just click on one of these things, that download that and give you a fast photo collage. There we go. Let's do a fast one over here. One more change on that, fast and easy. And there we go, not bad. As usual, my biggest complaint with these options in here is that it's still pretty much a one-shot deal. They give you the template, it drops it in. I'd like a few more options or adjustments for each one of these themes. That would be a real nice addition in here. But this is designed for people who really don't want to learn that much. They just want to do something fast and easy. And this fills that bill just fine. Okay, one more new feature. Go back here to expert mode. And it's right here, Elements Web. And this is a new online, kind of a subversion of Elements. Let me bring that up for you right here. Here we go. I've already brought in five pictures. And that's the media section. And all you can do right now is you can bring in more pictures and you can make slideshows and photo collages using those new options. Again, the real problem here is that we don't have any ability to adjust these. The slideshow, you're stuck with the sequence it uses. You can't change the sequence. You can't change the transitions. You have to use their pre-built sequence and pre-built transitions. You can change the background music if you want to, but I'd like to see more ability to come in and actually create a much better slideshow. Right now, this is just in the beta mode up here, so I won't be bothering with this until it goes full mode, probably next version next year. It'll be the full version of this. Maybe at that point, we'll get more options in here under creations, more things that we can do with this. Right now, it's just kind of a preview of what's coming next. There's also a new preview for a new mobile version. And it's similar to this. You can use your organizer. You can do a few real simple things in the new mobile version. Nothing great. And again, it's still just a beta. So I'm not going to really be bothering with that yet until it goes public and is no longer in beta mode. And I get to see the full finished product for that. So a couple of new things that are coming forward. But I think the biggest thing really in here, and this is going to be mostly for Macintosh users, is that they have improved their program in the back end. And it should run much better now on Macs. I've never had any problem with this on Windows. That's really not an issue because it's built for Windows. But Mac users should have a better experience now with that updated back end or programming for the computer. And again, my recommendation here is if you have 2022 or 2021, I just stick with that. I don't think there's anything really that important here unless you have a Macintosh. If you have an earlier version than that, if you're back several versions like 2018 or earlier, then you really should upgrade just to keep your program as current as you can because things do change in computers. The way computers run changes every few years in a major way, especially if you have upgraded to Windows 11. And you probably should upgrade elements at the same time just to keep things current with the current version of the operating system. Okay, if you like this video, hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, and I'll see you next time.